Today we're going to learn about the modern atomic theory, how it all began. Do you have any idea what this photograph is of? This is actually a photograph of atoms. This is a drawing depicting the pathway of atoms. This was taken at CERN. I don't know if you've heard of CERN. You may have heard of Fermilab, which is located right here in Illinois. But CERN has a largest particle collider. It's called the Large Hadron Collider. It's the world lar world's largest and most powerful particle collider. It was built by the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN. Uh, it was built by over 10,000 scientists and engineers from over 100 countries. And from this, they were actually able to, to identify a new particle called the Higgs boson. Couple things here. Well, first of all, when we look at the atom, understanding the atom is key to understanding our physical world. There's over 100 elements that exist in nature, and they all have unique properties. Atoms of elements react with one another to form virtually an unlimited number of compounds. Things that we're going to look at in the atom, the proton, the neutron, and electron. Let's get started. Well, when we look at the atom, we know the atom has three major parts. First, there's a proton. Pro and positive, both those begin with a P. Proton has a positive charge. Next, there is a neutron. Neutron sounds like neutral. It means it has no charge. Those, these are all particles. Finally, the other subatomic particle is the electron. The electron is negative. The proton and neutron are located in the center of the atom in a place called the nucleus. Around that is the electron. So electrons exist in orbit around the nucleus. So let's talk about the atom, the nucleus, and how our knowledge of all that came about. Well, first of all, we know these, there are these three parts, and they have the electron has a charge of minus one, the proton has a charge of plus one, and the neutron has no charge. They actually, actually know their mass specifically in grams, but if you look at these numbers, they're extremely small. So we're going to actually refer to the mass of the electron as zero, the mass of the proton and neutron as one, because notice how close those numbers are to each other. If we look at relative mass, the proton and neutron are almost exactly the same. You see the electron, very, very small, almost nothing. One thing, one comparison I make is let's say you're on a, a scale, you're taking your weight, and all of a sudden you look at your weight and you drop a feather on, on the balance or you add a feather to your mass. Your, your weight actually doesn't change. The feather does have mass, but it's so small in comparison to the other part that's being massed that it's, we just counted to zero. And the electron's pretty much the same way. The relative mass, proton and neutron, are pretty much equal. We're gonna say they're the same. The electron, we're gonna say zero. Even though the electron has mass, it's so small, when it's added on, we don't count it. The first person that, uh, in Empedocles, was one of the first people to look at the atom, think there was an atom. He was, he was later supported by Aristotle. Now we know they talked about there was fire, air, water, and earth. And that's really not where we're going to start. Let's, let's go with what we're actually going to start. We're going to start with Democritus. He said there were atoms, or as he termed them, atomos. And then there was John Dalton. And John Dalton said, yes, they're atoms. Now, he, the thing he said is that there's this in, invisible hard sphere. And he made these postulates about the atom, which we'll talk about a little bit more in depth later. But specifically, let's go over the postulates. He proposed the modern atomic model, and this was based on experiment, experimentation, not just pure reason. He said, all matter is composed of atoms. Atoms of an element are identical. Atoms, each element has different atoms. And then he said, atoms of different elements combine in constant ratios to form compounds. And then finally he said, atoms are rearranged in reactions. And we see this is different from the previous who were philosophers. They just theorized that atoms exist. Dalton was the first one to actually use experimentation. The next person who came along was Sir Joseph John Thompson, or we'll just call him J.J. Thompson. He said invisible. He wasn't convinced, so he said, let's do an experiment. His experiment, he used cos uh, cathode ray tubes. And what he did is he had particles shoot through those cathode ray, ray, ray tubes. And when he did that, so he came up with the idea of an electron. So J.J. Thompson discovered subatomic particles common to all elements in the cathode ray tubes. He named these negative charged particles with very little mass electrons. So what happens, they were tra tra uh, traveling from one end of the cathode ray tube the, to the other. 
And they could actually deflect these particles if they use the negative end of a magnet, it would attract them. If you use a positive end, it would deflect them. And that's how they decided they were negatively charged. And then finally, what he came up with was this new model of an atom. It wasn't just this plane sphere. And in this model, there were electrons. So basically, we see here that we have these electrons. Each circle represents an electron. Now around that, all that area is positive. So we see these electrons are negative, and then all the area around it is positive. So that was Thompson's theory of an atom in 1899. So we call this theory the plum pudding model of J.J. Thompson. And that's a plum pudding theory. Now, where does he come up with that idea? Well, in the time, plum pudding was an, actually a very popular dish. And so what this would represent, that would represent a negative electron. You see these different things are in the plum pudding. And then the dough that are, is around it would be positive. So that would be the positive part. And then the plum pudding part would represent the electrons are in there. And that would be the negative part of the atom. Next, you also, also could think of it as a raisin bread model of, of the atom, J.J. Thompson. Some people call it the chocolate chip cookie model. Once again, this is the negative part of the, of the atom. And then around it, the dough is a positive part of the atom. So there's a positive, there's a negative. That's J.J. Thompson. So J.J. Thompson, he's, he's associated or attributed with discovering the subatomic particle, the electron, which is negatively charged. Now next, Ernest Rutherford said, only electrons, I think there's more, let's do some experiments. Rutherford did design an alpha particle scattering experiment that used a radioactive source and he shot that uh, through gold foil, the alpha particle. So what he observed is that most particles pass directly through the foil, undeflected, but every once in a while, there were some that were deflected and a few were reflected. And that, he said, he could have almost been hit by a gun because he was so surprised when he saw this happen. Because at the time, when he saw this, this means that there's something else going on there, that this plum pudding model is not the most accurate model of an atom. He concluded that Thompson's model was incorrect and that the model, the model he came up with was a nuclear atom. He said there was a positive, very small, very dense center of the atom, which we call the nucleus that it contains protons that are positive, and those electrons move around the nucleus like sort of planets move around the sun. The, but he said most of the atom is actually empty space. If you look at this, this is a picture from Rutherford's school. Rutherford was a professor at University of Manchester, and it was, he was a professor in 1907. He was in the School of Astronomy and Physics. In this photograph are other two other scientists he worked with. One of those is called Geiger. You may have heard of a Geiger counter. Remember, they're using radioactive active materials. And this, this is, a, I guess, a class photo from the university. So he worked with Hans, uh, Hans Geiger and also Ernest Marston, two people that helped him a lot in this experiment. So let's look at the ex experiment a little closely. So he has a radioactive source, and these are ra alpha particles right here that are being shot in this direction through that gold foil. Now the gold foil is extremely thin. Now as expected, the part that was expected was this part. That would, most particles would go through exactly through there. The fact that some were deflected, we see the ones on the side here were deflected, and then a few were reflected, that was a shocking part of the experiment. Because if it was a, if it was a uh, J.J. Thompson's model of a chocolate chip cookie or plum pudding, those particles should have been able to go straight through. So what he used is a helium nucleus, which has two protons and two neutrons, and it is positively charged because it has more protons than electrons. And when it, what happened is most of the particles went straight through. Now when we say very few, very few showed this deflection. So few showed this, and then very few showed this de uh, deflection or reflection. Now, most of the particles did what we saw in number one. Most of the particles went straight through. We see in number one, they're going, they're being, and then in number two and number four, they're being deflected, and then number one, we can say they're reflected. Now, why were they reflected? Well, remember, these alpha particles are positively charged. So the fact that when, we, when they got close to the nucleus that they were ricocheted in the other direction verifies that there's a very small, very dense nucleus. Now, the, we could see that maybe one in every 2,000 were deflected, so it was an extremely small number that were shot back. 
So what they expected was that most particles would go straight through. Because remember, these particles they're shooting through are positive. And so the, the dough around there is positive. And they would expect most of the particles to go through. And then every once in a while, some shot back. And so that was a surprising part, is that there was extremely small, extremely dense nucleus, here, which we'll say is positive, and that caused them to be deflected. So that's Rutherford's view of an atom. This is the new view, that there was a nucleus, extremely small, extremely dense. And the electrons, which are negatively charged, are in orbit around that nucleus. So what we're going to do here is just we're going to say this nucleus is positive, and those electrons are negative. Let's keep going. So notice the size difference. Let's say we have a pool and we have the nucleus. It's something very, very small that was shot through there. So next, Ernest Rutherford says we've got a charged nucleus. So that's what he's uh, attributed with. Next, Niels Bohr. He said, what about the electrons? Let's take a look at those again. So Niels Bohr studied the electrons. He put electrons in shells. He said the first shell had two electrons. The second shell had eight electrons. The third shell had its 18 electrons. And that's what Bohr is attributed with. So Bohr in 1913 had a more organized orbit or place to find those electrons. So that was Bohr. So he, this might be a sample of what we thought that looked like. So he said energy, uh, electrons moved in orbits or energy levels. So that's a new thing he was with which Niels Bohr was attributed. Then finally we had Chadwick. Now notice we said there was another subatomic particle we've not mentioned, and that's a neutron. So Chadwick was attributed with discovering the neutron, and that's what's important about Chadwick. Let's keep going. And then our current vision of the atom is a little bit more complex than that, and we one of those people that talked about that was Erwin Schrodinger. He said, particles in orbit, can we really see them? And then someone else who came up, so he said there was more of a wave function or a probability of finding those particles, those electrons, in a certain area. And then there came Heisenberg. He said, there, well, this particle S also has park properties of a wave, and we'll talk about that in this course as well. And so we call this a Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So Schrodinger mo model, instead of putting electrons in specific orbitals, said there was more of an area in which they could be found or a three-dimensional volume in which they could be found. And Schrodinger both said it has both part, uh, properties of a particle and a wave, and he came up with the idea of an electron cloud, which is the idea we have today. So we look at the list of scientists and what they came up with, and a lot of this development of our atomic theory was developed by the mentors and mentees of each scientist. And so let's, this is a nice summary of the atom. We look at the first one. The first model was just that there was an atom. That was Dalton. Next, there was J.J. So this was the first one. The next one was J.J. Thompson. He discovered that there was an electron. He came up with a plum pudding model. And he put, said the ne negative electrons were in a positive dough. Then number three, the third person we have here would be Rutherford. Rutherford decided this is what we see the first time that there's a nucleus. So Rutherford came up with that. So that's Rutherford right there that came with that nucleus. He said there's extremely small, extremely dense nucleus. He said those electrons are in orbit around there. Now, the fourth person was Bohr. He put them in specific orbitals. And then the modern view of the atom we have today, <coughs> excuse me, the modern view of the atom we have today, we attribute to, attribute to uh, Schrodinger. And we also say electrons are in three-dimensional dimensional orbits or there's an electron cloud with a three-dimensional area where those can electrons can be found. That's it. A nice summary of the lecture, uh, our model of the atomic theory. That's it. A nice summary of our model of the atomic theory. Let me know if you have any questions. See you tomorrow.